Hello everyone, and thank you for tuning in to the Hobo Monkey here in East Texas. Today I want to talk about transgender shock marketing. Um, that's the best way I can describe what's going on right now, and when I see these ads and these corporations pushing a transgender ideology, I kind of cringe and am embarrassed. Um, first of all, let's back up and define what a transgender person is. Um, there is a term called clocked that's used in the transgender community. And what that means is that you've been outed as a transgender person that you do not pass for the gender you're trying to present. So if you are a female and someone looks at you and goes, no, you are definitely male, you've just been clocked and it's not a good thing. Um, conversely, if you are a, a female trying to present as male and people decide, no, you're, you're not passing as male, you're clocked and it's embarrassing, it's hurtful, nobody wants to experience that. How one gets to the decision of transitioning is a long process. It's not a matter of waking up one day and going, okay, I want y'all to start calling me, you know, Susie and use these pronouns, whatever. Um, it doesn't work that way. It's through a series of counseling and meeting with medical doctors that a decision is eventually reached. It's not an easy decision. And sometimes, as you can find on the internet, there are cases where people regret their decision. And that is unfortunate, but it is a journey that um, we all, I guess, have to deal with at some point, at least in the transgender community. Um, so a transgender person in their mind thinks that they are one gender, either male or female, not the other 97, <laughs> uh, I guess, identities that are out there. You're either presenting as male and female, and think about that for a minute, because, especially here in the South, when we greet each other and work with each other on a daily basis, and we meet somebody who's a stranger, Immediately, we are identifying them as either feminine or masculine, or perhaps neutral, like the old SNL skit about Pat, where that person, we couldn't tell if they were a guy or a girl, and they would ask questions to try to guess. Um, but for the most part, we see people as male or female. And here in the South, we say sir, ma'am, etc. So. As a transgender person, when you go out and you are hearing the pronouns that you um, I agree with in your head, that's reassuring, that's reaffirming, that's what the goal. And it's not just for a weekend. It's not something that we want to play dress up and go out on the weekend. It is a life choice that we have made for the rest of our lives 24-7. And when you make that decision, especially medically, there's no going back. So it's, it's something to be considered. And there's also the concern of harm. Um, there have been shootings in Dallas, um, I think about two years ago, there was a rash of them, um, of transgender people. So the outrage gets so intense and so personal that people will act out and actually murder a, a another person. And it's just not the transgender community. It's, it's, there's all walks of life being harmed throughout the country, especially now as our country is getting a little bit more violent and intense. But that's a, another issue we'll save for later. So a transgender person um, deals with this gender dysphoria by going through counseling and reaching a decision. And they do decide to present as one gender or the other, as male or female. That's the goal. So what I see going on with the marketing, for example, in Brides Magazine, seeing a 
bearded man, a hairy chest man, a masculine figure in a woman's dress is messed up. It is wrong. It is totally wrong. It's messed up. I can't emphasize that enough. See, in a poster of a male in a woman's one-piece bathing suit with his junk exposed, or not exposed, but his junk bulge showing, is wrong. That's, that's not transgender at all. That is a man in women's clothing. That is drag. Um, if that's what y'all want to do, fine. There are places for that. But let's not put it out in the public because I don't know anybody across the board who thinks that this is attractive, who thinks that this is cute who thinks it is sexy, who thinks it is beautiful. I have yet to have a conversation with anybody that agrees to this. Um, so I, I just wanted to stress that my personal experience and from the people that I know, the few people that I know that are transgender and the articles I've read, um, yeah, the, this this is not a transgender thing. This is a um, somebody taking the uh, opportunity to label it transgender and put a shocking value to it to get views, to get a discussion going, and see how it plays out. Now, for example, let's take the Bud Light thing. Had Bud Light chosen a person who... Um, and if they wanted to use a transgender female, because there are transgender males out there, we don't seem to discuss the transgender male. It always seems to be the transgender female, which I'll get to that in a minute. But had they chosen a, trans a transgender female and chosen someone who was Southern, who liked NASCAR, <laughs> um, all things redneck, I don't think there would be an issue. I think their sales would have gone up. But instead, they chose someone who identifies as a 13-year-old girl and has a following base of the same. So there's multiple things wrong with that. First of all, why did Bud Light choose a um, person who identifies as a 13-year-old girl? because drinking under the age of 18 is, is not legal. Um, so why, why go there? And secondly, because of the uh, character that this Dylan person personifies is not accurate. It is a, a clown's attempt. It is a foolish attempt. And it is an embarrassing attempt at um, trying to display what a woman or a girl is. And quite honestly, I really appreciate the fact that people are voting with their dollars by boycotting Bud Light, by boycotting Target. Um, I think you need to keep that up, and it certainly seems to be a voice that's getting heard by using your dollars to hold back. And somebody I had heard on one of the talk shows um, suggesting that, I think it was on the Glenn Beck show, suggesting that we, um, for the month of June, do not sh shop at Target. Well, I'm on board with that. Um, I don't shop at Target much to begin with, but I will make it a, a conscious attempt to not go there. And if I hear somebody that wants to go to Target or is thinking about there, I would ask them not to. So, um, but I feel very strongly about this because as a transgender person, I like to live quietly and let my actions and my character convey who I am. I'm not out to push an agenda. I'm out here to be a part of the community. And that's why I keep pushing for anybody, regardless of what your gender identification is, regardless of your, your sexual preference, um, it's all irrelevant. It's what do you bring to the table? And are you involved in your community? 
Are you helping grow your community? Or are you just all about yourself? And if you're all about yourself, there's nothing wrong with that either. But for gosh sakes, do not um, jump on a bandwagon and promote the, um, the, the whole perverted, twisted um, movement of whatever this is. And that's another thing too. When it comes to the schools, I'm not very much educated on what's happening in schools, but I hear there's a lot of um, acceptance and pushing towards um, children and gender identities. And quite honestly, I would like to encourage people to leave that to the parents and the child. Um, that's a conversation for the family. I don't think the schools should be getting into the education of that matter. Um, mostly because it could be a phase. You know, many times it's a phase. Uh, my daughter for a while went through a phase of pretending she was a horse. And I don't think she believed she was a horse, but when you try to talk to her, she wouldn't answer you in, other, in any other way other than a horse language. <laughs> and she would romp around on all fours. She did this for, for months. And it got quite annoying at some point. I mean, it was cute at first, but yeah, it got annoying and you just wanted to say, come on, get, get real. But it was a phase, you know, and we know that. Um, thinking that a, a child thinking that they might be gay. You know, it's an experiment, it's a thought, you know, they'll figure it out. But that's between mom and dad and the child, you know. Um, I am for counselors being available to help support the family in conversations such as this. I do believe counselors play an important role in this, especially in today's age where all the information is flying and we don't know what's going on. We're all confused. Um, but the bottom line is use your common sense. As I said, when you're out greeting people during the day, you see them as masculine and feminine. That's all there is. It's simple as that. And if you greet somebody and call them sir, and they say, no, excuse me, my pronouns are, then just kindly respect that and go, okay, thank you for sharing that with me. I will try to be mindful of me. Forgive me if I make a mistake. Because it's really a lot of thought. And I will tell you that people who have known me a long time um, have problem sometimes calling me ma'am. It, it comes out as sir or he. Um, and that's okay. I don't get upset about it because I realize what a paradigm shift I have put on everybody. I have asked them to treat me differently than what they have in the past, and here's how it is from now on. And quite honestly, it becomes quite normal after a while where they go, you know what, I get it now, and it just seems that. And a lot of people are like, I don't even remember what you used to be like. So um, it all works out, but it is a process, and you have to be patient with people and um, not so militant. You know, I, I don't understand this need to um, be so aggressive, especially um, to be so hostile. Mm. I, oh boy, I, I'm probably going to get into it now. Um, this Riley person who was speaking um, against uh, transgender, I think it was swimming, perhaps? Um, and she's absolutely right. A male, a person born male going to female really has no business competing with women. That being said, if a woman wanted to challenge a transgender person, you could accept that challenge, I would think, in good sportsmanship. Um, but yeah, it would need to be known that, that you were born biologically male. There is definitely, and I think we all agree on this, there is definitely a physical um, advantage to being born biologically male. Your lungs are bigger, your bones are bigger, um, your muscles are bigger. Granted that when you go through the transition process, the muscles do become weaker, but your bones are, your bone structure is still as big. 
um, even though they may become a little bit more brittle, they're, they're still guy bones. <clears throat> and, um, and even though the muscles do get weaker, um, it does kind of even out the playing field, but you still have an advantage. The lungs definitely bigger, the chest is bigger. Um, so there is an obvious um, advantage. Now, if, if someone were to challenge me, I would probably lose <laughs> because I, I'm, I, first of all, I don't do sports all the time. Um, and you know I'm not as athletic as some of these women are. They're they're very um, strong and capable. Um, but to compete against a a person that was a male competitor is just so lopsided and so wrong. Uh, I am I am personally against uh, biological males that are now transgender women competing, and certainly not. Um, sh should not be allowed in a locker room unless you have already had the surgery and you know have have completed all those points. Um, so I guess to summarize that um, please be mindful that there is a community of transgender people that you probably may experience on a daily basis or weekly basis or what have you that you may not even realize their situation, their gender identities um, and what they've been through. You either see them as feminine or masculine um, and, and be kind. Um, I don't I don't think that they, for the most part, want the attention that's being garnished um, in the media right now. Um, the only reason I'm speaking up is because I think it's absolutely ridiculous and no one seems to have a sane voice in this whole conversation. And this whole thing about being woke and is ridiculous. Um, you don't need to be woke, you need to go back to sleep and you know, let, let people live their lives and um, have some common sense to um, conducting business. So when it comes to marketing your product, you know, know, your, know your demographic, know your customer. Um, do not try to push product um, in people's face that don't wanna see it. Uh, that's just basic marketing 101 and why this is not being um, um, put put out there or, or used um, leads me to think that this isn't about marketing this is about pushing an agenda and I'm not sure what that agenda is but it certainly doesn't seem to be selling product because obviously these the sales are dropping you know, and just as a final thought too, when it comes to the general public, um, I have found that people aren't as judgmental as you think they are. Um, I made the mistake of thinking that East Texas here in the Bible Belt would have no part of accepting anybody who was gay or who was transgender or um, you know anything beyond that. Um, but instead, they don't look at that. They don't care about that. What they look at um, here in Texas is what do you bring to the table? What kind of character are you? You know, um, are you trying to push an agenda on me? As, as long as you are a good person and respectful um, and productive, everybody will get along. And I think that's the bottom line. So once again, as I always like to say, <laughs> get involved in your community, know your neighbors, and become productive in your community and do good works. Thank you for tuning in. That's all I have today. I hope that made sense as I rambled again, unscripted. And um, anyways, thank you so much. Bye-bye.